Has anyone seen the Burger Man? Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Review. Today, we're gonna take a look at the Hasbro Marvel Legends Thor Love and Thunder Build a Korg Wave. Yes, the whole wave. I can't get it all on screen at the same time. It's been a while, hasn't it? I've actually been skipping a few Marvel Legends waves here and there because the almighty budget. Can't buy everything. But I'm super excited about the new Thor movie, which means that just amps up my need for plastic, you know? Looking at the wave, there is some interesting stuff going on here, especially this one. So colorful, so pretty. There is a new version of Star-Lord, King Valkyrie, who I'm hoping will be my Valkyrie on the shelf because I love this color scheme on the costume. Teen Groot, I didn't buy that three pack, so I didn't have a version of him on the shelf. Gore, I know nothing about this character other than in the comics, he's called the God Butcher, which, kind of gives you an idea of what he's going to be doing in the movie. Thor in that armor? Oh, that just gives me Simmonson vibes. It's just <laughs> from the comics, but at the same time, it is firmly planted in the MCU. And then there is the Mighty Thor, or Jane Ass Thor. On the backs, there are bios for each. I'm going to leave them up for a second in case you want to pause and read them. I think my favorite's Groot, though. I am Groot! The other figures in the wave, build a Korg. Down at the bottom, warning, small parts. Come on now. Nice artwork on the side of each. I especially like gore for some reason. On the top, I'm not even going to try it. <laughs> there's Thor's hammer logo. On the bottom, there's the UPCs, legalese, all that jazz. More words printed on packaging. But let's start with... Groot. That is a terrible angle. Okay, like I said, I never got the three pack that had Teenage Korg in it. <laughs> teenage Groot in it. But looking at pictures, I am pretty sure that this body is reused from that. It seems to have the same sculpt where it looks like wood or the planks laying over each other. Little bit of root, kind of veiny looking. Bark, I guess is the word I'm looking for. Well, I bark in vines because there's a twistiness too. Then it comes down to the foot, which has always looked like roots to me. Like it's not planted, but the bottom of a tree where it spreads out. I'm explaining roots to you. It's a crazy day. And then the fingers just kind of look like twigs. The face seems to have a similar expression where it's that, you know, teenage angst. I don't want to listen to anyone older than me. It's the top of the head that makes it super obvious that this is a re-sculpt. Much more defined. It's higher. It looks more like we see in the movies. But up here at the top, that's my favorite. It looks like, you know, it's broken off. It's an actual tree, which is the theme of this whole character. But these rubbery add-on new growths being up inside of there, that's just a beautiful thing. There's some green paint here and there just to add a little contrast. And again, looking at the pictures of the old one, it seemed much darker there. I like this more natural, lighter green. It's not so in your face. It just adds to the figure. A little bit here on the back of the arms, but nothing on the back of the torso. He even has a couple of broken planks for butt cheeks. Going over articulation, there, whoa, there is actually a ball joint with a hinge in the neck. With that, you can look up all the way down, even get some tilt out of it. Side to side, peg going out to the arm rotates all the way around. Hinge at the shoulder comes up to about right there. The wood runs into itself. Hinge and swivel at the elbow, slightly less than 90. Rotates, swivel at the wrist with a hinge going in and out. Dumbbell at the mid torso gets nice hula hoop action with some rotation. Ball coming out to the hip allows for this and this and Ooh, not bad. Slight rotation at that same point. Hinge of swivel at the knee, again, goes about 90 in and out. Hinge at the ankle goes, oh, look at that. Better than a lot of real feet. Forward, and actually some forward-facing pin for rocker. For accessories, Groot comes with two kind of grippy hands, or at ease, or his neutral hands. But you can also pop them out, and there is a trigger finger for, well, you need a weapon. And with that, it's very Guardians of the Galaxy looking. Outer space gun. Oh, but they didn't up and down hinge for a trigger finger. Still, look at that. That is great. But for some extra grootiness, you pop out both the hands. There are two add-ons where it looks like his body is extending out. He's a whip, sh 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 sh. and then there's some grip. And they're even hinged like a regular wrist, so you can get even more dynamic with them just by you know, cranking one way or the other. Next up, let's take a look at Star-Lord. And there's a lot going on here, but unfortunately that adds to the stiffness of the figure, which I knew before I even opened the package because of the trench coat. I love the look of a trench coat, but when we get it in action figure form, it usually does more harm than good. Don't get me wrong, it's soft, it'll get out of the way, but it's not very dynamic. You're gonna get into poses, and it always just does this. Got the Wicked Witch of the West thing going on. <laughs> 
The legs are a reuse of the last Star Lords or the last group of Star Lords. We got this several times. Same design work to the pants, to the knees, same boots. Look how much of a difference a little paint makes. Different upper body though. There was another trench coat quill with uh, the Mantis build a figure wave. I can't seem to find that. But again, like Groot, comparing pictures, it doesn't seem like anything here is reused from there. This seems much more traditional Ravager garb with the random armor bits added on here and there and the extra design work and then the blue stripe coming down. Itty bitty buckles on the shoulders. I wish those were painted kind of like this. I haven't seen the movie. Maybe they're red. I don't know. Plus he has a different style collar that's not quite as popped. This one's more relaxed. But notice the asymmetry to the arms. That may have forced them to do what they did where on the left, it's just sculpted into the arm. The armor fits onto the shoulder. The band works perfectly for a bicep swivel. But on the right, it's a much bigger piece. So here, they've sculpted the arm under it, and this is a separate piece laying over it. You can still swivel the arm underneath, and you can still bring the arm all the way up. The torso, though, well, okay, first there's this bandolier. <laughs> it's just hanging there. It's part of the design, okay? I appreciate it. I'm cool with it. It's just in the way right now. For the torso, there's another rubber overlay. Some sculpted wrinkles and design work for the shirt underneath. But this, I don't know if this is meant to be a full-on shirt. Or, okay, it's like a dicky. <laughs> it's a fake front of a shirt. I can see why they did that because of the vertical design, the zipper here. The ab crunch would have broke that right in half. You can still crunch under there. Yeah, it looks, well, it looks like flexing fabric, kind of. Then up at the head... He's looking kind of ego-ish, isn't he? Well, ain't you just a chip off the old block? Because I haven't seen the movie yet, so I'm not used to him with the bigger hairdo and the beard, it's hard to see Chris Pratt here. Maybe I feel differently after I'm more used to it. I've noticed with the longer hair sticking down like that, if you get crazy, you can get it up on the collar. And then you're like, wait, look up. Shift forward, pshoop, look up. Speaking of articulation, there is a ball at the top of the neck with a hinge allows for some up some down quite a bit of tilt left and right peg up the arm goes all the way around hinge at the shoulder comes up to there bicep swivel double elbow goes that far swivel at the wrist hinge in and out on a trigger finger hand hmm and it's the same on the left for another trigger finger hand oh look at that let's give you a look at it there's an ab crunch mid torso crunch is that far yeah it arcs back a bit swivel at the waist all coming out to the hip goes here here and about right there swivel at the thigh double knee oh not quite but impressive swivel at the boot hinge at the ankle goes back goes forward and then front facing pin for rocker for accessories we get star lord's tried and true set of pistols that's a big grip but push and twist someone needs to make his day but don't forget there's also pegs on the hips where you can Put that through the trigger guard, both sides, but it ends up holding the jacket out. Next up, let's open up Gore. And as always, the robier a character is in the MCU, the more traffic cone the action figure is gonna be. Standing here, it's beautiful. The sculpted in wrinkles and the textures and everything, it looks way better than fabric would have. I mean, this looks like my room right before laundry day. I'll pick up my shirts later. It just gets in the way of functionality, mostly down here. At least here you can take it, well, before I do that, it looks great. I'm gonna go ahead and try <laughs> take it off to show the rest of the figure. That frees up the upper body. There's not much you can do down here because of the two flaps. Hasbro has to work within the boundaries of the designs they're given. And I don't know, maybe Gore does a lot of walking, a lot of standing. He's such a badass that he can just Harry Potter. I'd be interested in taking this off or cutting it away because look at the pajama bottoms. Gore's ready for his sleepover. This stitching running down the arm, or well, scars, I guess. Same thing on the left side, all the way up to the head. Detail work there on the back of the neck, on the back of the head going all the way up and over. Then there's the paint work that absolutely sets it off. And you can't deny it, there's some Christian Bell in there. Rachel! Have the toga belt going around and then kind of flapped and hanging down. Oh, and he's been messing with the dark hold. Just a cool little paint app thing that stands out, especially the color against all this paleness and white and cream of the robes. Well, I guess it blends in with the shadow that they've done around the eyes. That makes those stand out too. Going over articulation, there is a dumbbell joint at the top of the neck. Allows for some up, down. So much tilt though. I love a good dumbbell. Side to side, arm swivels all the way around, hinges out, swivel at the bicep, double elbow. I haven't done this yet, but Oh, all the way. Swivel at the wrist, up and down hinge on a weapon wielding hand. And we're back. Ball joint hidden behind that belt. Nice hula hoop. Rotation. Ball coming out to the hip allows for... 
Oh, even not fold it up, it still gets in the way. Some back, some out. Swivel at the thigh. Double knee, and how long has it been since I've said can kick his own ass? Boop, 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 boop. Rotation above the foot. Hinge at the ankle goes all the way back, forward, and some front facing pin for rocker. For accessories, look at this badass sword. It's almost stone like. Then the guard is a shinier black, some brown for the handle. Ooh, but the hand is nice and rubbery. Easy to get into the grip. The up and down hinge at the wrist makes for a very nice sword holding stance. Next up is Ravager Thor. And yeah, I've seen all the Jack Burton comments and I cannot unsee that now. But at the same time, this is very MCU Thunderstrike-ish. Jeans, yellow on the boots, jacket, and hell, he even has a ponytail back here. That <laughs> basically describes the whole figure. It's kind of just, you know, leisure time Thor. But still Ravager with the extra design work on the jacket, even back here. Some paint on the back? Under the hair? You didn't have to do that, Hasbro. Little Bruce Springsteen going on. But I love this aspect, just the yellow wraps. Anybody else would be, hey, why do you have that yellow down at the boots? But for Thor, it just feels natural. Okay, so it's not quite jeans now that I'm looking closer. It's got some extra design work. It wouldn't be an MCU movie if there wasn't extra seams on here. And I'm also seeing they painted the buttons. That's one of my favorite things when it comes to action figure manufacturing. Painting the buttons. It's just a little extra effort that I appreciate. And for the design on the shirt, it's the Nine Realms. So him wearing this is very Asgardian, but at the same time, it's just normal. Hell, I want this shirt. Not in white, though. I'm more of a black t-shirt kind of guy. And I'm definitely not a sun's out, guns out kind of guy, so I'll need it in full t-shirt form. In fact, let's do this, this. Holy shit, that works too. I feel like the chest is toned down a bit because we all know Chris Hemsworth. That was probably done to make this look more natural on top of it. Plus there's some floaty hair going on, again, to compensate for the thickness of this. There's a dumbbell there that allows for that much up, some down, actually some tilt with hair and everything else going on side to side. Arm rotates around and then hinges at the shoulder. Bicep swivel, double elbow, oh, just as nice as gore. Swivel at the wrist, side to side hinge. Hinge mid torso, crunches that far, arcs back. Swivel at the waist, ball at the hip, leg comes forward, leg goes back, leg goes, well, out. Cut at the thigh for some swivel. Double knee comes up to, oh, I get to say it again. Thor can kick his own ass guardian. <laughs> Hinge at the ankle goes back. Very tight. I hadn't done that yet. Goes forward. Front facing pin for rocker. It's Thor, so of course he's going to come with a hammer of some kind. And since it's not Mjolnir, it's going to be Stormbreaker. And I think this is the same sculpt we've seen several times over now. But I'm just noticing the paint. There's a metallic gray, and then there's more of a silverish gray. Easy enough to put in the hand. He looks like a badass wielding a giant hammer. Next up, we'll go with King Valkyrie. And this is exactly what I was hoping it would be. This is the new Valkyrie for my shelf. I just love the sculpt, the likeness, the design of the armor. It's very Asgardian. The way the whites and the blacks and the silvers play off each other here. The different designs with the discs and then the flatness of the white, but you get to the silver and it's got this crosshatch. The buckles on the legs that I didn't even notice until I got it into the light, but it's kind of lost in the glossiness. I'm thinking that these rings should probably be silver too. And if it's not, that may be something I just add to spruce it up a bit because it would tie down to the silver of the boots too. Nice lines, nice design work. There's this dagger in a sheath on the side here. I've already tried to pull it out. I don't think it's a separate piece. The silver is rough in places, bleeding over into the black. It's also up here a little bit, but at normal distance, standing on the shelf, I'll never notice it. Hell, there's even some silver here on the banding of the glove. Who on this side too? Oh, and there's some painted studs, my favorite. Again, kind of rough, but they could have not painted them. Yeah. Got that on both sides and some shiny black up top, some dull black below. Oh, got some full on silver splotch here on the back of the boot. All of this is offset by the blue cape and I love how it looks. Of course, it's kind of blending into my background, but the black and silvers and whites against that blue, it just pops. And then there's also a couple of blue braids in the hair, just kind of blend into that. Around to the likeness, that on top of this costume, it's just so good. That's why this is gonna be my main Valkyrie. Back to the cape, they did that standard thing where they thread it through the tray in the packaging. So when you're removing the figure, that's kind of dragging behind and getting stuck and you have to fold it and get it out. But once you get it out of the packaging, if you're having this problem where it's sticking out, that means that the peg has come out of the back. But the cape doesn't come off because it's glued here at the shoulder things coming over, which I like because it's not like Loki where you peg it in and then these just float above. Peg that in and then you are solid. It drapes more naturally 
everything looks good. Going over articulation, there is a dumbbell joint at the top of the neck. The hair does kind of get in the way of up, but there's a little. Quite a bit of down. So much tilt though. Side to side. Arm rotates all the way around. Hinge at the big old shoulders come up to about right there. Bicep. And to point it out, female figure double elbows. Those go oh all the way. Swivel at the wrist and then sword holding hand is hinged up and down. That's a lot of shift for the dumbbell at the torso. Gets nice hula hoop. Some rotation. This is hanging down in front of the legs. The ball coming out to the hip about right there. Back out. I'm not shabby. Swivel at the thigh. Double knee. Well, it gets past 90, but not quite all the way up. Still impressive. Hinge at the ankle goes back. Forward. But because of the high heel, it's not quite front facing pin. It's going to do more of a twist for your rocker. For accessories, comes with Valkyrie sword. Very distinct. I can't seem to find my old Valkyrie swords. Comparing to pictures, though, it seems to be a new sculpt. Look what a good up and down hinge will do. Oh, I like that even better. Next, we're going to open up Mighty Thor. And uh, smaller than I thought it be. I don't know why. It wasn't until I got it out of the package into my hand that I thought, wow. But then again, Natalie Portman is 5'3", so it completely works. But then the second thing that hit me was all the design work. The very Thor-like elements, but not quite. Well, there's the standard discs. Anytime you have a Thor, you gotta have discs. But then there's the Asgardian design work intertwined within that. And hell, I even love these rivets running up the seam lines. There's the other discs. Even the cloth has some designs running through it all the way around. Oh, and that's unmistakably Thor. But then there's also the comic elements because I think on Jane's Thor costume there, it had the wings down on the boots. Much more prominent, much higher, but I think that works better design-wise. Then the upper legs are very, very plain. I'm okay with that, especially with all the crazy designs we see on Asgardians in the movies. That's a nice break. It's a nice simplicity to it. But like we've been seeing so far, Hasbro isn't skimping on the silver. Still sloppiness to it with the brown bleeding through in places, but there's so much of it, it kind of distracts you, especially up here where they went crazy with all the little metal bits. But come on, even on the knuckles, you guys are spoiling me. Also like the rest, the cape is just gonna drape. It's got some softness to it, but nothing that's going to stay in place. It's going to go push. Unlike Valkyrie, though, there's no peg. It's just glued on under those discs here. But with an unmasked MCU figure, the make or break is the likeness. And has it been a while since I've seen Natalie Portman in something? It's kind of recognizable. I think more than anything, it's the blonde hair throwing me off. Nice curls to the hair coming down in front. Same in the back. I like the fade, too, from darker to lighter. Going over articulation, there is a dumbbell joint at the top of the neck. Some flex to the hair, but as usual, the back, not great. Forward, not bad. Ooh, tilt. Side to side. Peg at the arm allows for rotation all the way around. The costume does come out kind of a point above the shoulder, so it's going to swing out as you go, but you can get all the way around. Hinges up to there. Swivel at the bicep. Again, with the double elbows on a female figure, comes all the way up. Oh, and before I forget, pinless too. Swivel at the wrist, hammer holding hand is hinged up and down. Left goes side to side. Dumbbell mid torso, oh again surprisingly nice range of movement. Also shows that metal painted all the way back into the joint. Rotation, ball at the hip, leg comes to here, goes back, out. Swivel at the thigh, double knees, oh 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 oh. She can kick her own ass. <laughs> Hinge at the ankle goes back, goes forward, forward facing pen for rocker. For accessories, you saw, well, Marvel Legends, the heads usually pop off anyway, but in this case, there is an alternate helmeted head. Got Thor-like wings on the side, some red paintwork to make it pop a bit, and the same eyes peering out from behind the helmet. That's cool. But then she also comes with a Mjolnir, of course. Whosoever finds themselves worthy will be imbued with the power of Thor. That's exactly what it says, right? But as we all know, Mjolnir was destroyed in Ragnarok. So this has cracks in it. I'm guessing in the movie, somehow they reforged it. Again, with the silver paint coming down around the handle. I love it. There must have been a discount on silver paint at the factories this month. I don't know if it's because it was re-sculpted or if it's a new sculpt because of the cracks and stuff. But Mjolnir's been getting larger over the years. I think this is the biggest one we've gotten, at least MCU-wise. Or maybe it was done to further accentuate her size. Noticeable, but still works. And then to finish off the package cracking, let's get to Thor. And I've said it since the wave debuted. I was hoping this would be my favorite, and it is, simply because of the design. It's just the blues, and the golds, and the silvers, and the blacks, and the reds. 
and how they work together, but kind of don't. It's almost too busy, but very regal, which I don't know how that plays into the storyline of the movie, especially when it comes to Thor, but I can roll with a lot of stuff. I mean, what the hell's going on with this helmet, with this bird-like design on the front and the wings? Well, okay, the wings, again, very comic Thor-like, but then coming down on the sides and the blue lines and everything. Like I mentioned at the first, it's very Simonson, and I was into that comic run where he had to have a full set of armor to protect himself, and you guys know me, I'm not into spoilers. Just guessing, just speculating, maybe because Jane has some of the power of Thor, maybe that makes Thor himself weaker and he has to armor up or who knows. I wish the eye holes in the helmet were a little closer together because that seems very uh, pitch black, like Riddick can hide if he stands right in the middle. Seriously, I just like this design, how everything works together, but I can understand how some people may not like it. The design skews away from the MCU realism. Shoulder pads are a separate piece. And again, there's that standard Thor back that we were talking about with Jane. And then the capes overlaying that. The colors do so much to make things stand out. There are four colors, at least, on the bracer alone. And before we get too far away from that, I think the upper arms are reuse of which Thor is this? Infinity War? I'm missing a few Thors in action figure form, so I'm not sure about the upper legs because those seem kind of just Thor pantsy. But the majority is new sculpt. Oh, and the hair is very L'Oreal, just flowing in the wind. But again, Marvel Legends, you can pop this head off. Let's see what Ravager Thor, if it's the same peg size. Fits on there. Huh, that works. That too, if there's a lot of winds going on. With that off, you can see ball joint at the top of the neck with a hinge. Allows for eh, some up, some down. A lot of stuff going on up there, but there's still some tilt. Left and right. Peg at the arm allows for rotation up and around. You're going to have to miss the shoulder pad though. Hinges up to there. Swivel at the bicep. Double elbow. Oh yeah. Swivel at the wrists hammer hand going side to side. Same for the left. Dumbbell mid torso gets some hula hoop. Oh, that opens up some unpainted plastic. Then rotation. And with all that design work there, you go even slyly. It just looks broken. Oh, I guess the whole lower body is actually an overlay because this is one piece from here to here. Ball at the hip comes up, back, not so much. Out, about par for the course at this point. Swivel at the thigh, double knee, goes up to about right there. Hinge at the ankle, goes back, forward, front facing pin for rocker. For accessories, another storm breaker. <laughs> that is two for this wave. Odd thing about this one though, doesn't have the paint apps of the other one. This one's just swirly twirly plastic, whereas the one with Ravager Thor has that contrast of paint. But if you don't need them holding the hammer, you can pop out that, and for some reason, there's a fist. Then what do you do with Stormbreaker? Is this? Oh, it's a spoiler, isn't it? He's losing this hammer. Then there's the Build-A-Figure Korg, who comes in pieces, which is the definition of Build-A-Figure. Big toe goes to the inside. Same thing on the other side. Pop top can not popping. Oh, there it is. Just gotta give it some extra oomph. Push straight in. Oh, that one popped. And then put on the head. Is the head gonna be the toughest thing to get on behind the camera? And I really, 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 really like the design of this. It's much more interesting than the first version of Korg, but the colors that added, well, like most of this wave, the reds and the blues thrown in here just to break up the sea of stone and fur, it just works for me. But I do have a huge problem. This. The legs will not go down to neutral position. They are forever splayed out. Wide, wide stance. I can't tell if it's a clearance issue, the cutout where the stem for the ball joint comes down, or if it's just running into the crotch piece. I guarantee I am getting in there with the Dremel at some point, seeing what I can do. It'll work for a battle stance, but standing on the shelf, <laughs> this is already a bigger figure taking up quite a bit of real estate. I don't need him taking up even more. Sculpt-wise, there is some reuse from the first Korg. And it's all about matching rock formations. The right shoulder's reuse, the same on the left, except the left shoulder has a big old peg hole in it for this armor piece, so that's a new sculpt there. Or at least modified to not have the big hole. The hands, it's hard to tell. This one looks different because it's been holding a staff for a few years. I think it's the same. Definitely same on the left, though. And then the feet, I'm pretty sure that's reuse too, but the bottoms have been modified to move the peg hole and then not have have this flat spot on them. The heads have a different expression as this kind of cocky grin. The new one's just serious. The upper torso also seems to have the same beats, but it's also been modified because 
The old one had this disc with the sculpt under it. This one doesn't have that. It does have this nice fur overlay on the shoulders, which breaks up the materials, you know? There's a lot of stone going on. Might as well throw in some flowing fur. And that's the same down at the legs with the wrap around it. That would be done for warmth, wouldn't it? Does he get cold? Cold stone? No, that's an ice cream thing, huh? Maybe it's just some Asgardian gear he picks up because there's those things too, like the ram's head and that design work on the straps. Painted studs, I love it, there's so many of them. They also painted these copperish, goldish plate things here on the hip flap, and the extra design work on the knee pads. Again, it's the patchworkness of the pants that catches my eye. It pizzazzes up a very boring color scheme, but that does make the browns very plain looking because, oh, it's got some texture, it's got some seams, that would look absolutely beautiful with some wash to it. Just bring out that extra sculpt work. Going over art, going over articulation, there is a ball at the top of the neck with a hinge. Quite a bit up, not bad down. Is it tilt or is it swinging? Side to side. Peg coming out to the arm allows for rotation. Those don't get in the way as much as you would think. Same thing for the hinge at the shoulder. It goes up to there. Swivel at the bicep. Double elbow because of the bulk, the rockiness, the extra overlay stuff gets up past 90 a bit. Swivel at the wrist with a well, up and down hinge for a weapon wielding hand. Dumbbell mid torso, not bad. Some rotation. There's actually another swivel at the waist behind that belt. Ball coming out to the hip, swings up to there. Back, not so much. Out. <laughs> Does Korg win the wave? Swivel at the thigh, double knee. Fur gets in the way, but he can almost kick his rocky ass. Hinge at the ankle, goes back a bit, runs into there, goes forward, runs into there. Front facing pin for rocker. And he does come with an accessory. He's got his blasty staff thing, which is reuse of the first Korg, but has a much, much nicer paint job to it. Totally works. I love this look. It is just a damn shame about those legs. Size-wise, we've swung back around to getting big Thors. Pratt is 6'2", Hemsworth is 6'3", and th th that's quite a size difference here. And this Thor is even bigger. But we're looking at 6 and 3 eighths for Gore, 7 and a 16th for Thor, 6 foot even for Jane, uh, about the same for Valkyrie, 6 and 3 quarter for Ravager Thor, 6 and a quarter for Star Lord, and then just a little under 6 inches for Groot. Okay, maybe not quite as big as what Hasbro was doing at one point with, is that the Dark World? Because when you get Thor this big, it makes every other MCU Marvel Legends figure small. Flip side, Jane and Valkyrie fit right in with the rest of the display. And I guess if you wanted to, you could use her in the comic display. For Valkyrie, her figure was during that time where they were making all the Asgardians bigger, but then the other figure scaled down. And then this is the one I've been using with the display, but like I said, I think I like this costume the best. Here's the differences in Star Lords, one of the volume twos, and this goes way back to the first Guardians movie. If you're like me and you skip the three pack and have been using that very, very basic teen Groot, this is an upgrade. Then the build a figure Korg stands at about seven and five eighths, which is in line with the previous figure. It just seems shorter because of so at the end of the day, just a, another great wave of Marvel Legends. Now, of course I have my favorites, and that's just how the game is played. You can't like like everything. But even the ones I don't care as much about here, I'm finding interesting aspects. I'm finding things to enjoy. Like Star-Lord, initially I was kind of, well, it's more of the same of what we've been getting for years now, but the more I've sat on it, and I've sat and looked at it for hours now, I'm coming around to that hair and beard. For Gore, it was more of a, I don't know who the hell this is, but... I, as I've explored, I, I like the figure even more, and I'm more interested in seeing it on the big screen. For Groot, I'm super happy to finally have a nice teen version. Valkyrie, we've had several versions of, and they've gotten progressively better. Mm, I don't see this ever being beat, even if there's new versions later. I can say that now because I don't know what's going to happen in the future. Ravager Thor? <laughs> kind of plain, but it's still Thor, so it's still exciting. I don't know how that works. I hate to say it, but whenever the Mighty Thor was revealed, I thought, well... It's, it's Jane in a Thor costume, but now that I have it in hand, yeah, it's Jane as Thor, but it, it, the size, the sculpt, the paint and everything, it's won me over. This was my big want, just because it it's so oddball. And I'm gonna say it, it is the odd duck. It's Thor in a big, bright, shiny costume, but somehow it works and I love it because of the craziness. Damn it, Korg, you had so much potential. I love the look of you, but those legs being spread out that far, kind of ruins it for me. And you know, when I say something like that, I mean it because I'm a silver lining kind of guy. I usually find the positives and yeah, there is some positives and yeah, I may have to go to work on this, do some customizing, do some dremeling, but as is, 
I kind of want to just chunk it in a box and forget about it. But overall, as a wave, it makes me even more excited about a movie I was already excited about. But if you're not into the MCU, it's just kind of, well, here's a whole wave of MCU stuff I can just skip on by. But yeah, either way, Marvel Legends. Woo! If you enjoyed the review, comment, like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus if you're interested in seeing videos early or in a position to help out the channel. Patreon.com. Wherever you may be watching this always catch you on the foosh. It's also kind of weird to think that I skipped most of the Spider-Man No Way Home wave thinking, well, it's just Spider-Man's. It's just kind of small tweaks to the costume. But here, I think what gets me is all the colors. I mean, especially this Thor. Yeah, it's Thor. Yeah, he's armored up. Yeah, he's got his yellows, blues, and reds and all that. But it's just a... I don't know. It's just a cool wave and I'll leave it at that.